Okay, so today we're going to take a look at some products that T-Rex sent me over to look at. Um, I contacted them, to be fair, and I said, hey, I'm the guy that knows all the tool clamp things, and rumor has it you make tool clamps, why don't you show, send me some of your tool clamps, and I'll, you know, show people what you're doing and, you know, compare them to real ones, because that's kind of what I do. So here we have um, Open Clamps Type 2, Open Clamps Type 1, and Clamps Pro, which looks to be a mix of 1 and 2. Quick look at the front of the box. These legitimately look like ones that I own. But to look in here, this is kind of the one I consider to be the default type one. And then this kind of looks like the larger type one. This is a shovel clamp type two and an ax type two is kind of what I call them. This is the one with the W shape. This is just that really classic one. And then these, these two both look like they should. And that's good because some stuff, like I noticed specifically the MIG ammo stuff, does not resemble real life stuff. I looked at just their pictures, just like this on the front of their packaging, and there's some that just don't look like real ones. So let's have a look at these. I'm going to compare them to my Zavod 3D ones off Shapeways as well, so we can kind of get a feeling for what's comparable. So the packaging on these I thought was really, really cool. So inside the box is a bag, inside the bag is a little plastic container. They're all like this. And this is not the same with all 3D printed stuff. Now the difficult thing here will be that everything is black. So it's going to be really hard to look at, but you can see they're kept very safe with some foam here and plastic reclosable thing. Very nice. So this would be our sprue. So I'm in there pretty well. They look incredibly fine. I know it's really difficult to see these things well on camera and this black is not helping. So these ones here appear to be type ones. I don't see the kind of angle in the band, but the handle looks the right shape and size scale wise compared to the rest of the clamp. It looks very good for what it is. You can see there, kind of, it's really tough for me to see. It could supposed to have the bend in it. I'm not really sure. We'll, we'll keep looking here. And the next section above it is, I believe, the open version of that one, except they're back to back here instead of um, just in a row. I think these guys here might supposed to be... I'm trying to see a difference between this one and this one. Um, and it doesn't look super different to me on the camera screen that I'm looking at. Yeah, but what, what I think is this is supposed to be the first one that I showed you in that picture, and this would be the larger one. They don't quite feel 100% right, but they're very, very close. And I can show you why shortly and then the open version is that as well as up here one thing to note because i'll be talking about this later sorry about the lighting this is incredibly tough to photograph is the angle that they're sitting at when they're open so it looks like they're at about a almost like a two o'clock you can see they kind of stick up in the air let me try to get it where the light won't be blocked i'm not even sure what's blocking the light there but you can see they, they point kind of up this way here. Then we have the Type 2s. This one is to be the shovel one, the shovel type. One thing to point out if you're looking at a Type 1 and a Type 2 together is Type 1s have a much smaller handle, and that is portrayed here. Ooh, that one's just bumping right off. That one's broken. Um, but see, these handles should be smaller than these. These should also be thinner vertically than these. These are kind of fat steel, and these are very, very thin steel. And there's our kind of standard type 2 clamp there, and then there it is open. Again, the angle is kind of between 2 and 3 o'clock, but they look very, very good, very fine. Let me try to get some Zavod ones so we can compare, because... What, what's happening with well, the way my studio lights are, I know it's really bright in here, but I'm trying to illuminate the black. This part of the 
kind of resin block is actually shading the the prints from my lights that are above me. So it's it's kind of an odd situation. All right, so these are the Zavod clamps I bought from Shapeways. I've used a handful on builds in the channel. There you can see kind of as good as he could get that shape. But the main thing I'm going to want to compare is just the scale of the two together. And I'll see if I can get them close enough where you're dealing with two completely different extremes here, black and white. But I think that that's a good example of how different the scale is. Like, look at this bottom one here, and then this one over here next to it. This is actual 35th scale. This guy couldn't quite handle that scale, so his are way out of scale. Now, uh, criticism-wise, if we pull in really tight on the open ones, you can see on the open area where the tool would lay, you've got two dots, sort of two holes. And this is a, a point where he's kind of gone wrong here with his design. And I can show you why. Of the types we just looked at, we have this one and this one. These are the two he did in type 1. And then his type 2s are this one and this one. Now, uh, fair note, uh, in my office, which is messy right now, I can't find one of my copies of this that is slightly more correct. This has a bit of a weird bend in it. If you can see, it doesn't quite shut correctly. It functions, but it's kind of riding high up here, like somebody jacked up the back. So we're not going to really comment on that part of it. But anyway, these are the two type 2s. These are the two type 1s. Now, his, which I just showed you, when it was open, had two holes in the middle. Now. The problem with that is, if we look at his box, because it's easy, frankly easier than looking at the actual model itself, he's modeled in the leather in there, but there are still holes in there. Now, one, I give him props for bothering with the leather at all, although he does not add it to the band, which may have made the bands harder to make, I'm not sure. When I do them in PLA, it actually helps uh, make them stronger, but whatever. So he's got the leather on the base, but not on the band, but he's got holes in the leather. So this is the Type 1 open. This is a Type 1 with its original leather open. And as you can see, it's riveted here to the base, and then the holes where they're connected to the tank are covered by the leather. So the leather, if you're going to do it in a model like his, should just be solid. And that's one of my main only criticisms of these this product at all, is that there shouldn't be holes in the leather because it wasn't there. Another example, uh, this guy here, he's got both pieces of his original leather. There it is on the band where it should be. And this one doesn't go far enough to cover both holes. Um, I don't think it ever did. You can see it's kind of chewed off here, but still no holes. You don't, you don't attach it through the leather. And it's actually curious because I don't know how they attach them because how the hell, like this guy here, if I'm putting this on a tank, do I screw it to its base first and then rivet the leather? That doesn't make sense. Did they just pull the leather back? I'm not going to do that on this one because it's super old and kind of fragile, but um, I guess if it was new leather, I'd probably just pull the leather up and then put the screws in because usually they're screws. Sometimes they're bolts or rivets, but usually it was screws. Um, but yeah, there's that. And then my other issue with the Type 1s... Uh, of his. So when I said that the, the larger type 2, which I call kind of the axe type 2, because it's kind of got a fat shape here. Um, and if you look, that is this guy here. Even on his rendering on the front, it's sitting kind of low. Now this is an interesting clamp, and if you watch my clamp video, and I know not a million people did, but some people did, they kind of sit like this, but often they're too loose and they kind of fall. So they sit like that. But then they have kind of a really obvious um, point past the forks where it sits down here. So there you go. That's that's kind of what it would look like. It's still got a big fat kind of rectangular shape. You could fit something this large in there. And I don't have one of these that's like in pristine condition so that it sort of functions correctly. Because the older these get, they sort of they kind of just go through the motions. And what I mean by that is. I've been printing a lot of these in PLA. These actually have resin pins, not that that matters, but so that is uh, this one. And when this one functions, it's just really rusty and it'll, it'll close, but not very easily. And you really got a reef on it and stuff. 
Um, these kind of behave like I imagine these things were designed to. So when you press the, the handle, they sort of just pop open and then bam. But mind you, it's plastic, but still, manufacturing new ones, you can get a much different sort of uh, action out of them. Whereas these poor relic pieces, they've been sitting around for so long, they barely work at all. Um, but also with his, with his open clamps, this guy, when he's open, um, this one's rusty, but I can force it into its actual open position. Uh, so it would be like that. And then this larger guy, more of the same, he actually lays kind of even flatter, like 100%. These guys are even. And then this one, it, once the butt hits here, it does curl up a little bit. But the way that his were, he kind of has them a bit like this. Like I was telling you guys, like sort of two o'clocks. And his smaller one might be close to this, but it felt more like this. And they kind of don't do that. And you can tell, again, with the plastic one, it just falls all the way back open. So when a type one is open, it's completely open. They don't, there's no stopping point. Now that's different than a type two because they actually have um, this back piece here was cut and a piece of it was left bumped out so that it stops the handle, usually at the exact point the handle is supposed to stay at, and then it also in turn will stop the band from being able to go past because the band hits the handle. So they have an absolute point and it's more correct with how his look. So a Type 2 might actually look like that when it's open because as I pointed out, th this is designed to stop them and kind of have them in, a, in an open position. This shovel guy too. Again, the handle will stop sort of straight out, and then the band will hit here. So when they're open, they have that look, and his are pretty close to that. I, I, it's honestly so hard for me to tell because they're so tiny. It's not a big deal. The main thing I noticed was that these Type 1s, when they lay open, they should be really, really far open. Now, one thing that it could be in, uh, influenced by is the handle. You see here the handle's below the base. But that's normally not an issue because most of these are on risers when you use them. And I'm not really sure if he has risers on his or not. I don't think so. But that's something that scale modelers are going to have to kind of worry about. Photo Etch has done a pretty good job with that. But a lot of times, like on Tiger, most of these are on risers. Now, if they're not, then the angle would be slightly different and closer to his, I suppose. Now, I am nitpicking, but nitpicking is what I do. So, But it's... I'm going to have to look again. <laughs> it's not bad. Let me compare. Get that in the shot. It's pretty damn close. They're just a little bit more vertical, in my opinion, than they should be. The, the bands on the open ones, they should be a little bit more back. And if it's on a riser, it should be all the way back like that. And then it sort of points away and not up. As you can see in this image, it sort of points up. And they don't. But again, it depends if it's sitting on something or not. Um, as to the proportions of his larger type, um, it, it'll, it'll do. It's the best I've seen in the scale. But these, like I said, these are weird clamps because as you can see, they if I sit this on my desk, it sits like this. And if you look at the Panzer III at Bovington, they're all sitting like this. They have these on the fenders to hold like the axe and stuff. And they do have this like large gap between the forks and the bar. But they can also sit like this, and if there was leather and a tool in here, they probably would sit more like this. And this one is also a little bit bent. I bet you it's supposed to be a little bit more in there. These are hard for me to find. I only have a couple, and this is the only one that works. But um, pretty good. Like, overall, his scale is perfect, and his uh, details are really good. Like I said, the holes in the leather is really my only issue. Um, the fact that he did this one is really impressive. Uh, this type of clamp was used on Stug 3 for the shovel, on certain Stug 3s, the Gs, uh, and on like um, Kubelwagens and stuff. It's a pretty common Type 2, and actually nobody really makes it because it's such a tiny little bugger, like size-wise comparatively. But So it's neat that anybody even tried to make this one because it's iconic in my opinion, because it's the standard Type 2 shovel clamp. One last thing I want to mention is, uh, I'm not really sure how to, how to phrase this, if you're doing 3D printed tool clamps that don't work, I've heard there are now functioning 3D printed ones, which I'm having a hard time believing, but someone said that to me and I'm waiting to see them. Uh, so, so far we've got closed and we've got open, which is great, 
But a lot of times on restoration vehicles, what you'll see is this position, which is sort of like the unlocked but closed position. So like if it gets bumped, it can't move. Like your tool could still stay in there because the forks are still here. And a type two, once you disengage the lock, it also kind of has a position it can sit in that is unlocked but not open, whereas this is open, right? So um, I guess I would like to see the third position, maybe? Like if, if people are really gonna do them this way going forward, uh, having another option would be interesting. I don't know how many other people would care about that. Uh, open and closed is pretty good, but um, this is a pretty iconic, if you look at a lot of like walk arounds or wartime images, a lot of times they just look like that. But then you're gonna say, all right, dude, where's the line? Do you want them to have one that's like partially being closed? No, but especially for these type twos, it's it's a pretty common thing to see. It's kind of a funky shape. Um, but so, you know, there's kind of three positions. It's in, but it's not back, so. And, you know, like with these 3D ones, once it's unlocked, you know, it just sits like that. Now, if it's on a riser, it'll sit like that. But if it's on a, if it's directly on the hull, it'll actually push out and it'll look different. So that's a whole nother thing. And I'm, maybe I'm just being weird, but anyway, um, these look amazing. I'm super impressed. And uh, I haven't seen the MJ stuff, but I know T-Rex and MJ are working together now a bit. Um, but these are the best things I've ever seen. Like when we got these, um, Tank Brusher and I, Kai, we do a lot of 3D printing on our resin printers. He's got a slightly better one than me. And I'm, I'm doing work on doing a hull and I'm doing all kinds of other stuff. And I, I messaged him and I'm like, those guys are doing stuff we can't get anywhere near. Like we could get close to this Zavod stuff on a home resin printer. We can't do this crap yet. This is above what we can do. Now you give it a year or two, maybe we can do this. But right now we cannot. So this is next level stuff. These two other sets are um, basically just more of the same of those two types of ones that are open, amazing. And then two type twos that are open, amazing. I will be using all of these. They also sent me the late and early fire extinguisher variants, which also have the clamps for their fire extinguishers closed or open without a fire extinguisher, which I think is super cool. I'm more partial to the late version because I've built it. There aren't that many in these, but the detail is effing amazing. Um, to get those shapes to behave themselves in PE is really, really difficult. The extinguishers also look super cool. So if you're into kind of decorating things in a different way, you know, you could just have this on the hull and just sort of like sitting somewhere, like on the fender or something, maybe the engine deck where a fire would be. Um, these are gorgeous. I couldn't get anywhere near this level of detail on my printers. And I actually have modeled this piece for my Tiger. So I do have a model of this. I could model it and maybe, or uh, I could print it in probably, you know, 16th scale maybe on my stuff, but not 35th and not this crisp. This is gorgeous. Here's their other one. Actually, I think this may have been the one that I did in 3D. I'm not sure. Um, but they're really, really pretty. The black is hard to pick up on camera, but it really helps show the details compared to like the clear stuff that some people use. Yeah, but these are really nice. And so you get, you know, four, four of the clamps without it, and then quite a few extinguishers, which is ridiculous. You'll, like, never need one of those ever. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't. I don't build enough for that. But So these are amazing looking. And the last thing they sent me over is these cable eyes. And it looks like they have both sizes in there, I think. Maybe even um, track change cable eyes in there. So these are very pretty. It seems like the main connection point on the, the block or sprue, whatever you want to call it, is sort of just this raised line in the middle, which would make the, the removal point and the sanding point always directly on the bottom. Um, what I want to look at, so you can see the detail of the braided um, steel cable is there on the sides. It looks pretty nice. They're a little droopy. You see that? Like, they kind of droop down, which I don't know how they really are. But I modeled this for my Tiger, and mine did not do that. 
I'll have to check. It's an interesting way to, to, to print it. I imagine they printed something like this. But see, that is kind of drooping in there. They're still very, very nice looking, though. And there is a difference if you see here like this. The thing that the braided thing goes around is like one piece, whereas this one looks kind of like two pieces. I've done a, a fair amount of shopping for these because I like to buy everything. You guys know I'm crazy. And there are differences in, in how the steel that the cable goes around is made. So it's good to see two different kinds in there. But I would imagine this is like Tiger cables, Panzer III cables, and then uh, like track change cables. But also super pretty. I'm just not sure on that kind of bend in them right there. It would sit a little funny, I would think, on the hull. All right, so that's about it. Um, maybe I just wanted an excuse to pull out my tool clamps again. I don't know. Um, I've been doing a ton of clamp work and research in the last little while. Um, started working with museums on restorations around the world. So uh, researching clamp layouts and giving clamp dimensions to people has become kind of a, a larger part of my, my life than it used to be. Um, so these things, like I said, Kai and I can't do this yet. Like some stuff we can, this we can't. So I would suggest, yes, if you're debating it, these are awesome. And there's stuff that we can't quite handle. I'm sure that his, his data is damn close for someone who probably doesn't own a bunch of them, which means they either had to go on a couple museum trips or, I don't know, watch my videos or I don't know what people do to get clamp information. But um, he's really, really close. The, the types you want are this shape, which, if people remember, has kind of the, the line and then the, the bend and then the larger one. You also do kind of need this one here that doesn't have a bend at all. It just kind of goes straight down. They don't have one like this. I know that uh, the company is spelled R-O-C-H-M, like Rokum or something. They do. I'm waiting on some samples of their stuff. I haven't received them yet. I've been in contact with them, and their data seems very, very good. Like, my, like they've been reading my mind, kind of. They know a lot of stuff. They, they even listed, you know, which vehicles have which clamps on their website, and I was like, how the hell do you know that? Because I've spent a long time researching it myself. I mean, I know people know this stuff, but I, you know, I've kind of been living it. So I'll get that reviewed when I get some finally, and then I do want to mention I've got a few videos coming up. I've been working nonstop at a job I hate, and I really apologize for not making videos, but I've got a few in the pipe. I've got a bunch of more 3D printers that have been sent to me, so i got to talk about those. And one of them is on a new FDM machine I got. We're going to build this... Well, it's not very difficult. It's a very simple kit. Uh, but this is my Type 1. I sell this on my Gumroad page. I want to do a video where I show people how easy it is to print and put together. And then if they want to buy one and print one, they can. These are $5 on my Gumroad page, which is uh, the same place I sell um, like my resin tracks. Like this STL is $5. Bucks. Um, this, an STL of the Type 1 is 5 bucks. So I've been working on, like, these are the, the plastic variant of the pins. So, like, this is a, a push-together pin design I've made. So when you put it together, you just have to slide the pins in. These are the same, but they're in resin. And I've had a, a few issues with uh, the all-plastic variants not quite functioning as well as I would like them to. So I've, I've added resin parts occasionally, and it... We'll, we'll get into that when I make the video, but I do have a video coming where I want to show people how easy it is to print one-to-one -one stuff, and these are, you know, modeled off of this one. So, like, this one is exactly this one, except that, again, the, the action is a little bit more like it would have been when it was built. Um, and then my objective is to model all my variants, make the STLs for all of them available, and then that goes hand-in-hand -hand with my work with these museums, because if... Like right now, I'm doing a project where on a Stug, they need data for clamps. So like they need this one. So I'm going to have to take good photographs of it, try to do some drawings of it with measurements and things. I would like to have it where I just have them ready. And I'm like, oh, you need that one? Well, here's a STL of it if you want to just print it and look at it. Now, they might not have printers. Um, or I could, I could print them and send them to them. But I think that might be more helpful for fabricators because I'm not an engineer. I can make a facsimile, but uh, that's kind of where I'm going with what little free time I have. I'm trying to get all my stuff done in 3D, 
so I can help uh, museums and stuff. The work we're doing with the Flak Panzer one, I think that uh, they're going to need all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to end up having to model some Panzer IV stuff. And that's if anybody wonders, you know, hey, where's the videos? That's what I'm doing. I mean, like, today is a day off. I wanted to squeak in one of my reviews because uh, uh, Liang's son of T-Rex, he sent me this stuff and he's awesome. And I owe him. I owe, I owe all kinds of people reviews. Uh, Eight Wheels Good, more Elegoo printers, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but this one was important because it was clamp related and I can kind of feed it into reminding people that I'm doing other stuff like this. Um, and I can just remind people that I'm still alive. Uh, you can currently buy a version of this. I think I'll, I'll update the file to this exact one. Like I keep tweaking these. So there's a handful of people that have already bought this STL. And that means that anytime I make updates to it for myself, I just put the new files up there and then they can buy or they can go back and re-download like an updated version and reprint it and it'll be slightly different. Like this one, uh, this is supposed to be this guy and this rivet is slightly too high. So at some point I'll lower that rivet and then I'll replace the STL of the band. Does that matter? Not really, but whatever. Um, so it's stuff like that. Like I'm, I'm tweaking them to make sure they're precise and then I'll always update. So if anybody ever buys any of my clamps, which I will be uploading and selling indefinitely, uh, any updates made to them will be permanent. Like you can always go back and get the newer files. Uh, but it is one, two, three pieces and then two pins, which are two pieces each. So when you get it, it's a couple pieces. You snap the pins in and it works. And my objective is I have a whole pile of these. I plan on outfitting my garage, like my snow shovels and all my stuff with these at some point. So maybe I'll make a video on that. It'd be kind of fun. So I've rambled on enough. Uh, it's nice to see YouTube again. T-Rex clamps are absolutely amazing. Detail is insane. Even my issue with the holes through the leather, I'm not sure that I can see it. I'm pretty sure I couldn't see it without a model. I'll try to get one on a model. I'll try to touch modeling at all, frankly. <laughs> um, my bench is taken up with a boatload of resin 3D printers right now. So anyway, that's my video. Uh, I'm still around. If you want this, uh, I'll put a link to the Gumroad in the description. My Gumroad also has early and late Tiger Tracks in 35th and for resin printing. And then uh, I've debated if people want me to make these. I don't know how cost effective it would be and I don't know what to charge people because five bucks for the fact that I designed it I think is reasonable, but I don't know what it would cost to ship them. I probably wouldn't charge very much because PLA is not very expensive. I'll consider it if there's interest in actually making them here and then like shipping them to people. Um, but if you're a museum, I will send them to you for nothing. Or if you're a restoration team, even if people working on vehicles, I will give them information and 3D prints for nothing forever. That's one of my like main passions. So anyway, I'm out. See ya.